today we're going to be playing frisbee golf. There's three keys to disc golf. Driving, approaching, and putting. We need all three to do this disc sport. This is either going to go smooth or probably be the worst round of my life. <coughs> Two off one. Okay, it's actually way more stable than I thought. So yesterday I was at the store and I come across this whammo frisbee and I figured this is the frisbee club. What better way to, you know, get to know your frisbees than throw an actual frisbee. A little bit of a rough start, but luckily we go Hutch Cafe, two off one. So, you know, no biggie, whatever. But whammo Malibu disc, 110 grams based on that second throw, I guess. Much more stable than I was expecting, so that's a good sign for today. We landed about halfway here on a 250 foot hole. Little headwind, so that's not great. We're gonna just be pumping this thing on hyzer until we really figure out how it flies. Come on, get over. Oh, that was actually so nerdy. <laughs> Let's go. I think because I've been throwing the glitch so much lately, I might be I might be a little dialed with this thing, not gonna lie. It looks like I secured the par on hole one, which I was not expecting. See how this catches in the chains. <laughs> Let's go. Go over the instructions quick. You can grip it, you can overhand it, you can backhand it, sidearm it, skip it, curve it. We're gonna try and hang it really high and get it to just ride that tailwind over to the right. <laughs> that was like an elevator shot. That is still flying. Yo, the loft time on this is insane, but I don't think I'm gonna get it more than like 170 feet. Okay, so far I'm actually like super stoked on this thing. The only downside is I don't think I'm gonna be throwing it any further than like maybe 200. We're gonna just trust the hyzer once again. Try and keep this one a little lower. Oh, I actually love that if it gets left. Ah, the little lower kind of got me. Should have kept it high. I left myself about a circle's edge putt, not looking too hot. Throwing a frisbee disc. Okay, grip it. Hold is indicated with the thumb on the top and the index finger just under the rim. The middle finger should be extended towards the center with the fourth and little finger curled back against the rim. Grip lightly. Okay, all right, this is the first challenge, guys. You see, I wanna make this putt, but I don't wanna miss it by too much. Do we try like a little, man, I don't know. I'm gonna just try and... Okay, that was, yo, guys, guys, that, give me... <laughs> I tried to just float it up. That was, ha that was, gotta admit, that was like a decent little putt. These short ones though, I might, ugh, God. These ones got me more nervous than the long ones. Just gotta follow through, just gotta follow through, guys. Guys, I gotta get at least like one birdie look out here. Maybe not the next hole, but the one after that, I think we might be able to get one. This thing's fun so far. I would say it's very similar to an ultimate disc, but much lighter and a little bit smaller diameter. So definitely less controllable. God damn it, my. Guys, this upper park design fucking pinch pro. If you want to carry water on the course, good luck. This bag is, I'm not gonna say it's trash, but for carrying a hydro, trash. Sidearm it. Hold the disc with two fingers on the underside. Thumb on top, wrist cock backwards. Swing arm downward at about a 30 degree angle to the body. Keep leading edge of the disc tilted down. Use wrist snap to propel the disc forward. I consider myself highly above average when it comes to the forehand throw. But if this absolutely blows, don't don't judge me, okay? Oh God! All right, forehand roller. Come on, baby. Come on. Backhand it. Grip the disc with the thumb underneath disc and fingers on top with the wrist cocked backwards. Throw, keeping arms straight and near shoulder level. Snap wrist forward at point of release. Let's see what we can do with this one. I'm gonna hang it out nice and high on a hyzer. Oh no! Get left. Fuck. All right, y'all, we got about a 45, 50 footer here. Little heady coming out. We're gonna try and keep it low, nose up, and kind of like ride it in on the on the headwind. Oh. Beating par might have been a tall, tall order. So this is the only one I think I could possibly, well, this one and the next one, actually. But if I get it high enough on enough hyzer, the potential of getting it into somewhere near a putt Yeah, that just doesn't move. I keep thinking I'm gonna be able to pump this thing more than like 175. Maybe if I don't try and go as high because then it stalls out and almost comes backwards. If you don't get it high enough, it ain't going anywhere. We're gonna try right in the middle on the next hole. This thing just doesn't go far enough to get a birdie look. 
Also, just met a dude out here. His name was Rory. Said he watches the videos. Kind of crazy because like almost every time I've been at a course in the last like couple weeks, I meet somebody who watches the videos. I always ask if they like them because I'm like, if you hate them, you hate them. If you like them, you like them. Thank you. We have another approach that's basically the same distance that I got off the tee. So we're going to try and keep it on hyzer right through the gap, slide it up. Sit, hit that tree. All right, par. Whew, absolute tester range right here. Malibu Whammo Frisbee disc. We got about a five footer here. Whew. I think a five footer with this thing is equivalent to like a 20 footer with an actual putter. Have you ever thrown around with like a Frisbee disc? Not even an ultimate disc, because honestly, if I had an ultimate lid, I feel like I could get it to most of these baskets. Luckily, we got a tailwind kind of in a tunnel here. It is. It's starting to rain. I want to go 25 feet high, not higher than that. Just on a hyzer, let her get through. Oh baby, get off that, no, no. Oh, that was gonna be so good. We're gonna try and just pipe it on a nice nose up floaty. Almost an Annie. Oh no, <laughs> this is a, oh, I almost want to go scuba. You know what, just for you guys, we're gonna try and drill one in. This might be where my score falls apart. Hey, that, I took band. That was a good run. Can I make a putt? Well guys, it is raining, so that's good. We're gonna try and continue on here, finish up a few more holes and we might have to take a break. We are filming another one after this. Put this on hyzer, let it ride. Oh, that's about to get so nerdy. Oh, what? All right, let's see what we can do. It is uh, it is coming down, guys. But we do have a little gap here between the trees. The Frisbee is not dry. Oh, no. Let's go. First actual putt with the Frisbee. I probably should have been trusting it on just a nice little forward toss before, but I was... I think I was babying it too much, but I was a good little par save. This hole might be kind of fun. 90 degree turn basically to the right. We're gonna try and put a little height on it. Nose, di well, nose up, but on an ante, so it pushes over. Let's see. Oh, that actually might be so good. Get clean. Ooh. I did not see where it dropped, but that might be my first real birdie look. We'll see, we'll see. Don't get your hopes up. So when I first started like actually branding this channel as the Frisbee Club, a lot of people, you know, in my videos, they thought I was joking when I was calling the discs Frisbees. And the thing is, is I think a lot of people who think that way, who like get mad when you call it Frisbee or Frisbee Golf, they're probably newer players. Because the origins of disc golf obviously come from Frisbee and Frisbee Golf. Like <laughs> you've probably been playing for like two years. The only thing you know is Paul Macbeth and, and fucking watching Joe Mess, which brings me to my next point. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is if you get mad for people calling discs frisbees, go find somewhere else to hang out. I don't know. Get out of my comment section. I don't censor anything, but if I'm going to censor anything, it's going to be people getting mad at me calling a disc a frisbee. Oh my god. Oh, this thing is so fun because it's so slow and honestly once I release it I have no clue if it's going right or if it's going left like that one I thought I just missed it left and then it slowly just drifted right and Took a little band. So when I first started calling it the frisbee club I wanted something just you know simple and straightforward, but something also maybe a little controversial Not to most but to some and I guess the way that I looked at it is if you don't like me or you don't like my channel because I call a disc a frisbee and I call this the frisbee club, then I don't want you watching my videos anyway. You honestly just gotta pop the hand at it nice and fast. So if you're a regular on the channel, you know we're big on the comment section. I have one of the best, you know, groups of people that are commenting on every video. We have good conversation. A lot of smart, intelligent, well-worded people in my comments and I absolutely love it. That's why I try and get back to pretty much everybody. But when I hit 1K subs about a month ago, I made a video and I got a comment from Jeffrey Bomber, one of the, one of the OGs of commenting on my channel. He always has something good to say. 
And he commented this comment and it, it, it like, it hit me deep inside. And I thought, I was like, I resonate with this so much. And I'm gonna share it with you guys. Having the amount of time with the in real life disc golf community as you've had seems to be the big distinguishing factor from the other channels. Beyond any charisma you yourself bring, I can't help but feel that so many of the other channels that are popping off have this Weenie Hut Jr. approach to disc golf that seems to have come with a widespread appeal and growth of the sport. That's great and has its place for sure, but it does kind of cleanse or whitewash the gritty working class origins of the sport, especially in the Midwest. He's from St. Louis, I'm originally from Minnesota. Everyone that's been around for a bit knows plenty of examples of dudes that were on the course that brought their baggage out and it was painfully apparent that Frisbee was all they had to live for. Which was always really sad, but also made the community really special in a way. Dudes out there literally using the same tool belt backpack straps for their tournament bags. Substance use, vibes, and fun were always in a broader context, which is important to remember but something that the recent crew simply has no access to because their understanding of the game has only been shaped by some Tony Robbins toxic positivity shit that the disc golf YouTubers seem to regurgitate into each other's channels. They've never tossed in a word without Jomez and one mil contracts. I don't bring it up to come off as having some kind of disdain for people newer to the sport, but it's the same reason all my friends from back home resonate with what you do because you perfectly capture the kinds of feelings that we've had growing up with a game. What's really exciting is that you're also forward thinking enough to see how new media is progressing, keeping up with the editing style such that you're able to carry the same disc golf vibes into the future. Sorry to the other guys, but I'm not always trying to learn how I can throw further or what other shit I can buy, consume to maximize my game, unless it's PFN pulses for 700 foot forehands. 300 feet dead straight. This is not gonna be probably getting there at all, but. That was probably the best throw of the day. I just had two more people come up and like say what's up and say they like the videos and everything. It just, it just warms my heart. It was funny because I'm playing this round obviously with a literal Frisbee and they had told me over on hole three, I threw it like probably 100 feet and they were like, damn, like they were, I guess watching from, I don't know what hole, but they were like, Oh, that, that's disappointing. Like, usually he throws pretty good. <laughs> but I cleared the air. I said, guys, I'm throwing a Frisbee. It's 110 grams. It's not going very far. So, you know, don't judge me off of that one. So if you're newer to disc golf, or maybe you just, your disc golf community is maybe in like a higher end area. I don't know. But maybe what I just read, like, doesn't really resonate with you. And, and maybe it did nothing. From where I come from, something like that really does resonate. I remember when I was like 10, 12 years old, there was a guy who lived across the street from my local course. His name was Dwayne. And now Dwayne, it's safe to say he was on some drugs. Back when we were a kid, I feel like you don't really like understand the context of like people like that. But they, he literally lived in a crack house and he would sit out on the porch and throw putters off of his porch into whole eights basket. And, and when we were a kid, it seemed like he would make one like almost every other shot. He probably only made one of them ever, but in our minds, we were just like, what, this guy is the best disc golfer we've ever seen. Dwayne would come up to us and we were in middle school and my buddy Austin, he had this sea line like Omega putter that was super cool, had like a die on it and everything. And Dwayne was like, bro, I'll trade you this R-Pro dart with a barbed wire die on it for this Omega. And like back in those days, we didn't know what we were throwing. We were just chucking Frisbees. And so Austin was like, sure. And, and he had this dart in his bag for probably like, he probably still has it at home, to be honest, like 10 years later. Interactions like that from your young childhood, or I feel like I've said it before, like playing league with a bunch of dudes ripping darts and drinking beers when you're in middle school is just the type of stuff that nowadays, it's still out there. It really is. But I think a lot of these new disc golfers have never experienced the disc golf frisbee culture like that. Do I go Heiser or Annie? That's the question. I think I'm gonna try and ride a, don't call me on a foot fault if I don't, if I don't step in the same spot, guys. It's fine, okay? Oh no, oh, that's actually really good. We're good. And so it was these interactions with these people growing up that really formed the view on disc golf for quite some time. Obviously, as we've gotten older and really realized that these people were like, not people we probably should have been hanging out with, but at the time, that's just how it was. And now the disc golf scene is so new and th there's nothing wrong with that. I'm so happy the sport is finally growing and I'm so happy for the $1 million contracts because I really do love this sport and I wanna make a career out of it. I've got another eight foot putt here if I miss it. 
I'm just, just talking to these dudes here. They're probably gonna think I'm a chucker. There we go. I get nervous on 10 foot putts more than I should, but with this thing, it's like 10 times more than I should. This is like the tightest hole I'm probably gonna play. I'm gonna try and just pipe it right up the gap. I'm either gonna have a good shot or absolutely bogey this hole. Oh my God, that was so good. <laughs> It's so funny because you can pipe it. Perfect shot, hyzer flip up, and then 175 feet max. When you think of the word frisbee or disc golf, but when you think about it, like what does it mean? You know, what is it, what ideas or memories from your childhood or memories from your young adulthood when you started playing, whether it be two, 10, 15, 20 years ago, Leave me a comment and like, let's, I'd love to read these messages. They're some of my favorite comments are just the long books that you know somebody like really put their thoughts and ideas into. We're gonna try and just miss the branches here. Swing it up on a hyzer. Oh no, I yanked it. Oh God. Well guys. No. <laughs> that is gonna do it for today's video. It went, as expected, I don't know, this thing, I, you couldn't do much with it, but what I did do with it, I, I felt was respectable. A little 110 gram Frisbee disc, Malibu, by Whammo. Pretty fun to just get out here and like try and really hyzer flip up some angles. Did not glide as far as I was hoping for, but still fun. I just, I just like really enjoy disc golf, and I'm sure y'all do too, so. Comment down below what you, what are your thoughts on on that you know on the origins of frisbee and when did you start and what were the experiences that you went through at your first league or your first you know disc golf scene like what was it like because for me it was it was kind of crazy it was a long time ago and times have really changed but some of those memories are like some of the most vivid memories in my in my life to be completely honest it's been it's been a wild ride out here and thanks for watching guys we will uh. Oh shit, we will see you in the next one. <laughs>